Mm. You know, a mentor said to me today, what are you complaining about? You should be happy that they said the quiet part out loud, that McConnell, you know, like he did with Merrick Garland, uh, is being very straight about it. Yeah, I'm doing what's good for us. Yeah, this problem's better if it exists for us to campaign on than if we fix it. It's just complete anathema to responsible leadership uh, in a constitutional democracy. And that's why Washington, to your point, at the end of his address said, be a nation. That is all. And that's the least of what we do. So Ross Perot, 92, I went back just to kind of remember it of what it was. Um, he absolutely had an influence in the outcome of that election. There are very few people who will say Clinton would have won otherwise because of the damage he did uh, to Bush. In the latest polls, early on, it did look like there was a species of Trump voter who was more interested in you as carrying the message. And we've discussed that. Uh, now, depending on the poll, it looks like you could be doing the same thing to Biden. What is your explanation to people who say, Trump is too dangerous to the democracy, Bobby, to risk having Biden lose and you lose and him win as a result. And you will be empowering a would-be despot. Well, I don't, first of all, I don't think that President Biden needs my help to lose to Donald Trump. He, you know, when they're matched in head-to-head -head matches, he's losing by 10 points. And I don't think he's, you know, the Democratic Party has already said he's not going to come out of the White House. He's not going to debate. He's going to stay in the White House. And I don't think that that's a winning strategy for beating uh, President Trump. I think that his, you know, I think what they're gambling on is that maybe these court cases are going to work and take Trump out of the race. Uh, but I don't think that they have a strategy for actually beating President Trump. And, you know, right now, Chris, my, as you pointed out, my, I'm beating both President Trump and President Biden and young people and people under 45 in the battleground stages. I trounce them. I beat them across the nation and people under 35. I'm winning, uh, also trouncing them among independents. And as you pointed out, independents are now the biggest political party in our country. And, uh, I'm at 24 points on average in the polls, which means I'm 10 points ahead, um, 10 points from winning this election. All I need is 34 points to win in a theoretical con three-way contest. How close so, are you? And my popularity, my popularity is on 25 points, net popularity, 25 points ahead of both of them. Right. You... The, uh, in the favorability ratings. So, I, you know, I feel like I have a clear path to victory. I'm gaining about one point a month. I only have to take 4.5 points away from both President Biden and President Trump over the next 10 months. I, I feel like I have a path to victory, and that's why I'm in the race. Well, as we both know, likability is good to have. Um, different than viability, electability, right? They can like you, but not think you have a legitimate shot so that they won't vote for you. But you do have numbers that we haven't seen in a while. The fair pushback on that is, well, that's because people rarely run as independents. They run in party. But, you know, we'll take it for where it is. What do you want this audience to know that Bobby Kennedy Jr. would do that they will not get from Biden nor from Trump? Well, you know, I would add this to the point that you just made, which is you have two presidents who are running, former president and current president, who are both uh, who are both the least popular candidates of their party to ever run in modern politics. Seventy percent of the country says they don't want that contest. And, you know, isn't it time that we actually give the American people an option other than the least of, uh, of, of two evils? And we give them an option to vote for somebody that they actually favor, that they actually like. I mean, my whole focus is on rebuilding the middle class in this country, getting our kids into houses which are completely inaccessible to them right now, purchasing a home which is the central fulcrum of the American dream that you and I grew up with, that if you work hard, if you play by the rules, that you can finance a home, you can take a summer vacation, you can, you can raise a family, and you can put something aside for your retirement. And for our children, that dream is, you know, nobody in our kids' generation believes that that dream applies to them. Mm. 
in order to give that to them, we need to unravel the war machine. We need to unravel the, the, this corrupt merger of state and corporate power that has turned the agencies of the government predatory against the American people. Mm -hmm. And we need to solve the chronic disease epidemic, which is debilitating our kids. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.